shape. Gotta build. Hey! There's a ground that needs to be drilled. And all I want to do is dig. Welcome to a podcast about all things Minecraft. Enjoy your stay in The Shaft. The Shaft, episode 233, recorded on July 28th, 2020. I am Wes Wilson. <laughs> I am Brent Copeland. No. And I am Eric Fullerton. And I am Ant Venom. Yes! <laughs> we have a or- guest again! Yay! <laughs> we Thanks, did it! <laughs> oh, I, I, was, I was just waiting for the invite back. You know, I've been waiting for this my whole life. You know, <laughs> I've, been, I've been counting the days, <laughs> counting the days, just like she, looking at the calendar, be like, please, when are they going to invite me back? Yeah, I'd see, him, I'd see him. I'd see him at. Week. I'd see him at those mixer dinners at at, yep. at the PAX conventions, and he'd be mm-hmm. like. Wes, when do I get to be on the shaft again? <laughs> Just pull him aside. It's like, you know, thanks for inviting me, but like, I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> I miss conventions, man. Like, honestly, I've been feeling that lately. It's like, this is usually when that season would start. And now I'm just like, but we can't. Yeah, It's understandable, but still, it's like. No. Well, so this is the thing. Like, I've been being almost a total homebody for years now. But then <laughs> when I go to cons, I do it up, right? I live bigger than anybody else. I stay out all night long. <laughs> I work all the booths. And it's my, like, I had about five or six cons a year. And that was my socialization. And that was really mm-hmm. all I needed as a huge extrovert. It's right. really all I needed. And here I am. <laughs> Cheers are. to that. Like <laughs> I would I mean, I was so looking forward. I mean, again, they were like one of the first to cancel, and I understand that. But man, I was looking forward to the new Minecon. Like Minecon was coming back. Yeah. Right. And I was yeah. so excited for that. It's like, man, they're gonna do it right. They're gonna do both versions. They're gonna do the live stuff and the in-person stuff of what I always wanted. They're doing it right. Yeah. So, I get it, but it'll ah. be even better next year or in True. five years whenever <laughs> oh again. god oh no <laughs> let's just let's just say 2021 and we'll all feel better we'll we'll feel better about it now and then we'll fe- we'll feel bad yeah <laughs> right <laughs> oh my god yeah well I, so other than being um you know uh, lonely and devoid of social contact. How are things going, friend? Uh, not too <laughs> bad, honestly. Um, I mean, it's been quite a few years since we've talked, like, as on, you know, on, in this setting. And, like, a lot's happened on, you know, the YouTube front and whatnot. Since, I la- since we last spoke, I'm no longer doing live commentary on YouTube at all. I haven't been for about four years now. Um, it'll be four years next month. And uh, it's been going well. It was the best choice I ever made YouTube wise. I feel like I've, uh, after a bit of stumbling, I feel like I've found my balance again on the platform. I've been really happy, even though I haven't been making videos as often. Those I do make, I'm very happy with. And it's like, how do I word this? Because we've been, I've been making videos for so long, um, I like it started in 2011 and I've been making videos casually for even longer than that. So many people have been dealing with burnout. And while every case is different, I at least feel in my case anyways, um, I dealt with that burnout and even in a severe sense. And now I've come back to the other side. It's like doing YouTube is like not knowing gymnastics and being told to walk on a balance beam. You swing wildly back and forth until you find your balance. And I feel like I found my balance at this point. So that's how things have been going lately. And it feels great. Well, and, and I've I, I know a lot of people who have had to deal with this kind of stuff. You know, when I was working at Mixer, you get a lot of of people who are who are just they're afraid to not stream. They're afraid to yeah. not create content mm-hmm. and finding that balance where you're like, I'm doing enough. Mm hmm is really hard with streamers it's actually a a more difficult problem to tackle because i mean you know there's so many streamers out there that stream like i mean there's some who love it and do it 12 hours a day but and and like almost every single day but it becomes very difficult to compete with that and you can't blame the streamers who are streaming 12 hours a day it's just like 
it, it, it's like peer pressure, right? Your peers around you, those you look up to on the platform are streaming that often. You almost feel pressured to do so. And if you don't, it's like you feel like you're missing out. But if you do, you get burnt out. So you have to be willing to accept a balance. Yeah. You know? And the sooner yeah. you can do that, the better off you are. I think we've been doing a, a balance like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just, we went the other way. Wait, we definitely don't want to get burnt out. So let's only do, I don't know. Two so to three a month? Years. You think that's enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure we've quit for long enough, man. <laughs> there's still there's still some hardcore viewers sticking around. So, you know. No, I, think you're, I think you're fine is what I'm saying. I think that was perfect. The perfect break. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what, I, I, what, what would you be doing if you weren't doing uh, YouTube? Um... That's the further and further I drift away from when I started doing YouTube, the harder that is to answer. I mean, yeah. back in the day, like way back in the day before I started doing YouTube as my job or right before, um, I was actually going to school for computer tech work um, because that, that was always what my passion was. It, that was then. It still is now. Um, had I been doing it for my job, I probably would have lost that passion. Like just because it was one of those things where it's like, oh, it's good as a hobby, but maybe not as a job. Um, so there was that, what would I be doing now? Let's just say the curtain fell out from under me in every ass, every facet. I honestly do not know <laughs> because all of my like experience and drive has gone. I mean, probably video editing in some sense. I'm definitely very good at that. Um, but yeah, all of my skill and technical ability has definitely gone into, you know, what I've been doing. So there might be like new media consulting in some regard. If YouTube as a platform fell off completely, I think a lot of people would be disenfranchised. I think I'd have bigger, bigger things to worry about if YouTube just stopped existing. Right. Um, yeah. So I once had a friend who... Um, said, Wes, I'm very disturbed because at night I walk by my son's room and I hear your voice coming out of it. <laughs> and I, uh, I just want you to know that, uh, I've been experiencing that with you. My son oh. watched you and watched your videos for the longest time. And I would hear your voice out of the corner <laughs> coming from another room. And I'm like, what, what is Anthem? What's going on here? <laughs> and, and the other thing is, is that sometimes, you know, like I've been in this community a really long time and i feel like a lot of the people that i interact with have have particular niches mm -hmm. and i really didn't expect my son to suddenly fought, like view you as the resource mm -hmm. that he wanted to watch you know it just didn't click with me like that 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 was what was going to happen you mm -hmm. know i mean and I didn't expect him to watch Seth Bling or anybody else I knew either. So it's not yep. like that. It wasn't a prejudice thing. Right. It's just that I, I just was a like, good thing. yeah, but, but I, and that's just it. Like I, when I saw him watching the videos, I went, oh, wow. Oh, wow. No, no, that's cool. That that's good. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it was very disconcerting. <laughs> I mean, I can't say that I have that experience personally, but like, it's always interesting, man, when I get messages from people at this point, I get messages from people who are, you know, like in their teens, but then I get messages from people who have like gone through college at this point, who have liked either liked my videos, used to watch them or one that I've been getting a lot because again, I don't do live stuff anymore. My content has shifted to a more mature style. People who used to watch stopped and have started watching again yeah. because you know, now it caters more to an ideal that they like. And I mean, the videos I'm making now, I like way more than the stuff I used to do. Like yeah. I, whenever I have to go just for whatever reason, I have to go back and watch an old video of the live stuff. 90% of them anyways, I can't do it. Yeah. Like I can't sit through the whole thing, especially if it's like a mini game recording. It's not that those are particular, those are specifically bad recordings. It's just that like, I don't like that. The, the sort of like me getting really rowdy and whatnot. I don't like that. I like the sort of videos where it's like, I'm, you know, very scripted, very sort of, um, you know, 
I'm in control of everything beginning to end. And mm. I can actually like, this sounds weird and a bit narcissistic. And it, I, I promise you it's not as set the narcissist, um, <laughs> but I can binge my own videos. Yeah, I actually can. Not that I do. I'll watch like a few back to back just to refresh myself, but I can watch them beginning to end and not mind it at all. Yeah, no, so. I, I'm, I'm a little bit the same way. You know, we've done, these rambly chit chatty podcasts for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey. I can't, I can't listen to the podcast like the ones we create anymore. <laughs> uh, like, like the old ones? Like, well, no, I mean, even like this, like we're just sitting here <laughs> having a goofy conversation, but like I tried w listening to last podcast on the mm -hmm. left. Right. Um, and I got annoyed by them. I'm like, I don't want to hear your stupid in jokes and all your chit chatty <laughs> nonsense. Let's talk about the content, man. You need structure. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I feel you. Like I see, I understand where you're coming from with regard to your old content. Mm -hmm. Right. But no, I mean, that's, that's fascinating to hear that your, your son is into that. It's like, I mean, got yourself a little, if he's into my current content, like you got yourself a little engineer there. Cause what I do is I break things. And if he's yes. into that, like, mm -hmm. you know, he's into, he's into how, uh, things are broken down and put back together. So that's, that's awesome. That's, a, yep. that, that's, that's great. No, he's, he's, uh, my son's pretty awesome and it's, it's mm -hmm. been pretty cool uh, watching what he's been getting into, but like seeing you come through, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It could be much worse is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> and he it could really, be listening to really, our stuff, right? It really could. It really, really could. What I'm saying to all the parents out there is that my content is a great example of the content your kid should be watching. Yeah. Again, said yes. the narcissist who doesn't call himself a narcissist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a Minecraft mat pack. I think that's I think that's probably the best way to put you. Like a mat pack. That's interesting. Mat pack, you know, that does yeah. um game theory. Love that dude. Oh, Matt Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 of course. I heard Matt Pack and I'm like, Matt Pack. Like, you know, <laughs> Minecraft maps are pack. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. I, I, I did the joke for a second there. Okay, no, I'm glad you clarified. No, I mean, uh, I, I, I definitely would say there is a little bit of inspiration drawn from him, from YouTubers like Vsauce and whatnot, probably Vsauce more than anyone um, when it came to switching up that style. And it was like, it was all started from like a Reddit post. Like me switching styles from live to non-live was started from a Reddit post. So someone <laughs> blew, blew up a bunch of TNT uh, beyond the world border. I'm like, wait, let me mess around with that. Yeah. And I was like, mm. well, I could make a live video out of this, but scripting it felt a little bit better. And it just evolved into that. I know, I know I've been getting into that a lot, but um, yeah, that's the main big change that's happened since I was on the podcast last. Yeah. Astragali said Ant Venom is secretly three maps in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, speaking oh, of what everybody's been up to, let's do this. <laughs> Our journey it up this week. <laughs> okay. So I got a quick one and it's uh, kind of comes back around from last episode where we were talking about the old hackity hackity that happened to my account and uh high pixel servers and they've yeah. done their investigation uh -huh. and uh i am cleared so they unbanned me, yeah. and um so i'll be back on there sometime to play uh, <laughs> sometime sometime <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't prepared. I thought it'd take longer. So, you know, I'll do a little more prepping and then I'll uh, get on and uh, play some Quake or yeah. Owls or something. Nice. See, I may not be able to get any of you verified on Twitter, but you get banned on Hypixel unjustly. That I might be able to help you out with. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where my circle of networking uh, kind of fits in a little bit. <laughs> well, oddly enough, it got fixed today. So maybe you did help out somehow. I don't know. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Didn't even think about that. Oh, what about you, Wes? I know you were asking me to uh, come in and play some Sky Factory, but uh, I was deep, deep into some EverQuest. Yes, <laughs> that is that is something you've been doing. So I still have been doing Sky Factory. And this uh, this has been an interesting experience because I'm having to experiment 
with a lot of mod content that has evolved over the past five years, you know, it's been what five years since we did FTB, you know, and, and I'm, so I started working on automating this time and there's a simple storage system that I've been poking around with. And, uh, what I've been trying to do is you remember I had built all those little bonsai pots that yeah. were growing trees and everything would die and all the things would go into the chest beneath them. Those chests would fill up. So I'm like, well, I don't want half those things. Why don't I pull them out mm-hmm. and put it, put them into barrels, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I've been automating my stuff. The only problem is, is that then I said, oh, wait, I need blaze rods. Great. <laughs> And um, and as I was describing last week, the nether in my world is horrible. It is horrible and it is uh, it's it's bad. And I walked around a stronghold for a really long time and found next to nothing in it. And after probably four hours in the nether last week, I realized I didn't get a single blaze rod the whole time I was in there. (laughs) Did you get a gun? Uh, no, there are people with guns who were shooting me. Yeah. Pew, pew, pew. But I don't one get, they, I don't get their guns when they drop them. What? Um, so, so anyway, so I had to go back. I had to go back to the nether and I'm like, okay, I am going to fight blazes and I'm going to get blaze rods. And it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> And then, like, I would run down onto this little plateau area and I would fight some blazes and then I would start getting burned and hurt and I would turn around to go and stuff spawned behind me. And I'm like, no. So (laughs) then um, so then I said, "Okay, look, I need to get into a better environment. Why don't I get back over into the stronghold? Maybe there'll be some more blaze spawners in there. And I can just hang out around the corner and just pop out and kill and pop out and kill. I'll do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have the biggest stronghold I've ever seen in any Minecraft map in my entire life. And I think so finally I find a place and suddenly there's chests everywhere. And I'm like, Oh, look at this. I got diamond horse plate armor right in my freaking sky factory map. Like I'm ever going to use a horse in sky factory. (laughs) Okay. But I have diamond armor for him now, but then I found this thing and it plants torches for me. Right. Right. It's a little auto torch thing. Like follows you around. Yeah. Like if it's in my inventory, I can turn it on or off. And if it's on and I'm walking in the dark, it'll plant a torch for me. And it, use, it doesn't use any resources or anything. So I just oh. run around and I got a torch path behind me everywhere I go. And I'm <laughs> like, this is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, finally, I got the things that I needed and I went back and I started doing my automating. And uh, so far, it's working pretty good. I'm I'm uh, I, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting proficient in mods again. So will it pick up the torches for you when you go back? No. <laughs> no. no. It, it should. Th- wh- why? I don't know. That's what I've started doing when I when I do my mining. It when I like go, turn back it. around. But that's See, because you need the torches. Yes. That's why you put a switch on it. So like there's some kind of a switch, you know, if it's a if it's a UI based thing where it's just like drop mode or you know place mode and then pickup mode and pickup could be useful for other things if you need to pick up torches for some reason and then you could dump them into your inventory or but you said that the torch thing doesn't use resources so do you do you have to like equip it with torches no. or see then you'd be getting free torches out of nowhere so uh, okay it's free torches all the time i don't have to worry about having torches ever ever again <laughs> so can i come over and pick up the torches off the ground and you just have the thing put them back down Yes. Oh, <laughs> hey, that Free sounds like for everybody. Exactly. I think you <laughs> have figured That's something weird. out here. We should start a, a business. It's a torch party on my Sky Factory Four server. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you have a giant piston floor, like what, that can retract a bunch of blocks, or you know, or or that's nothing but um. 
like hoppers or something where they can get retracted mm -hmm. and you just walk <laughs> and you place torches all around and then you retract or extend the floor and it just drops all of the torches and then you collect them into a system of yes some sort. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's sky factory probably wouldn't be using hoppers but some sort of an item management system yeah yeah no and and i like i uh, so the the only problem I'm encountering in Sky Factory right now is taking the step into power systems is very intimidating right now. When I look at the next little blocks for like, you know, they have like one of those little instruction books where it's like, do this next and do this next and do this. And the next few steps that I have are really like, you need to make this 20 deep recipe where you're going to need four of these. And those require five of these. And, mm. and I, so I'm a little intimidated and that's why I started working on the, on my um, automated storage is because I understood it. <laughs> and I'm intimidated by everything else. I feel that I'm intended. I'm intimidated by mods in general. So that's why I haven't really gotten into them much at all. I've stuck with the vanilla game pretty much. Yeah. The the, for my for most of my existence i tried like the mad pack once and i was just like eh. yeah. i think i think i may have started off on a on a mod pack i wasn't quite ready for but yeah. really which one well it was the mad pack um oh. I, what i wish i had gotten the, gotten on was the hexit train when that first started i uh, think yeah. i would probably like if i had done that i probably would have been more into modded content in the long run mm. so. well we we did ftb back in the day and it was a lot of fun Except yeah. the only problem is sometimes I would have logged on and and Brent would have made something. Mm -hmm. And it was big. And I'd be like, <laughs> it's like what's complicated. this? And I made a like, big poopy. Wes, come does, see my big poopy. Exactly. <laughs> he'd be like, look, I made this thing and it does this thing. And I'm like, yeah, but how? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and and it's one of those things where like once it's made you don't pay attention to it anymore you know what i mean so so like that's again like that's one of the things i'm kind of enjoying about this sky factory four journey is i'm digging into the mod packs again in new ways even though almost nothing i'm making right now has any recognition from from the old mod stuff <laughs> so yep uh -huh. Modded Minecraft is a is a foreign world to me for the yep. most part. People have people have tried to recommend I, I play like RL craft just because survival stuff and that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you trying to torture me? My son wants me to play it. And I'm like, <laughs> You're a jerk. You're a jerk. I did not know you were a jerk. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know I was raising a little troll. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so what me? Yeah, you. Uh, so I'm in the process of buying a house. So I fill my time signing contracts and locating 1099s and yeah. brokerage statements. It's a whole lot of fun, let me tell you. Oh, but yeah. for some weird reason, though, lately I've been getting a, an influx of messages um, over Instagram, like DMs, asking me if I'm interested in selling my Minecraft account. Is that happening Weird. to everybody else? Like no. I never got those before. I've Probably. been like a recent. I've been getting I, things about. Were you at this Minecon? Do you, can I have your Minecon cape? Things like that. Uh, I think I actually understand what's going on with that in a way that you guys might not. Oh. And I feel like maybe this might be an interesting little thing to explain. I don't know it on a super deep level, but I know it centers around um, Name MC. Uh, which is a website where you can look up like people's Minecraft skins, see what capes they have. Look, you know, it, it, on the surface, it looks very innocent, but there's an actual market for people like who basically, you know, you can change your name in Minecraft now, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you can't transfer capes, but you can change your name. So when people drop using a super rare name, there will be people out there who will use like automated tools to snipe up those names because mm. there there's a market for people who want to buy those um so that's why you're getting requests about your minecon capes because those are not transferable you need the account for that so there's probably if there's any way to find out what email is attached to a certain person's username 
um, how they got that from you, or it maybe you know, looking up Instagram handles. Like they basically right. probably, my name is my the same exactly. name. So yeah. they, they just do a quick search, see if there's a messaging system of some sort where they can try and buy it. And yeah. that's why, because there's just there is actually a market for people wanting to buy caped accounts oh. um, of any sort, really. So like I would bet, I mean, I would bet my account would be A, my account would be worth a lot, and B, Mark from Mojang would be very quick to disable that account if I were to ever sell it. Like <laughs> Mark's on top of it. You know, if my, <laughs> if my account got somehow weirdly hacked. And I mean, I do keep stuff, my stuff very secure. I won't go into detail, but I do. Um, but if it somehow ever happened, I would just message my main man. Mark not Watson. Not, well, I don't want to throw uh, I, okay. <laughs> Disclaimer. Oh wait, I should I not have said it? I I don't want people messaging him about that, but right, like, right, right. so like, maybe I shouldn't have dropped his name. Well, there. now I'm getting excited because I'm like, okay, so if it happens, can I message Mark? <laughs> I mean, maybe like it would yes. depend on the circumstance. Oh God, I should. I will. I no, I know Mark but, well. Like we, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, he's like my buddy, and we, oh, yeah. Disclaimer: yeah. Don't go messaging him about it. But you know, if something extraordinary happened, let's just say, then yeah, I I could go and message him. You know, uh, about that probably. I'm um, sending him a message right now. Ask Ask him if he can help me with my hacked account to Hypixel. If there's, he can tell me what happened, all the details. I mean, no, I'm, just I, I, I'm not gonna, sp- I'm not gonna speak any further. But if you feel like doing that, go ahead. I mean, he, he might be totally willing to help out. I have no so idea. So I just went to, I just went to Name MC, and I looked and saw that I'm on there in my skin, and it said I only had one K. Yeah. So. I don't like that nobody is bugging me. So I'm going to go. I went to my Minecraft account and now I'm changing over to all my different capes because uh, I want them to know I have three capes. Yeah. And we're going to make this happen. <laughs> hey, yep. can I have your extra cape codes then? Because I only have one cape. So <laughs> you only have one? <laughs> I think I've got one on my desk. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. These aren't really usable. But I have these in my desk from <laughs> years ago. Oh, oh my god. god! That's the one that the red one. Yeah, that's the one I have. The yeah, I think one, I, guess. Th- I don't know if I've used this red one, but it is for a Minecon 2011 cape. Yeah, yeah. no, that yeah. was the Vegas one, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I just showed the side that has the code, but I don't think it's high enough resolution for anyone to read it. Uh, and I, ha- I have my 2011 cape on my Xbox account, so I wouldn't care if someone w- if someone was clever enough to snipe the code off of that with whatever with the resolution that my camera is on stream. They deserve it. <laughs> so, just take it. Let me Fine. rewind. Real quick. Enhance. So Aren't there, there some go. AI uh, image enhancers out there that could just do it the with the some like OCR and get oh, just pull the data straight from it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll, 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 I might even do that. I might be willing to sell my account to get back, uh, not Dead Workers Party, but what's the, the Shaft account that we want really bad? Hmm. Uh, do we really want oh, it that oh, bad? Oh, oh the shaftpodcast.com? Yeah. We lost, we lost that website yeah. years ago. Yeah. Uh, Someone bought it and put like a, a million dollar price tag on it or some crap. We're like, dude, no. or 5,000, you know, yeah, but close <laughs> to, to us. That's a million dollars. So <laughs> it's, it's like the, those guys, they think that, you know, those, uh, Oh, uh, what are they, those domain parking people? They think it's like they get one visitor and they think, well, this is a million dollar domain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If only someone would start a podcast called the shaft and then want this, this <laughs> domain, like, um, right. we can just go to the shaft live. We don't need it that bad. See you. Know what's fun? You know what's funny is back in the day, someone actually sniped at Venom.com out from under me, under me back in July of 2011. It was a fan of mine who gave me the domain. Nice. Uh, he told me that he got it. And like, that's where like my main email address is through now and whatnot. Um, I mean, I actually sniped up a different domain that I'm pretty sure is probably worth a pretty penny. And I don't mind mentioning it, but um, it's my last name dot TV. So like, uh, yeah, nice. So like, it's a, if I ever need it, need a domain for a new email, like I could just use like my first name at my last name dot TV or something. Yeah. I don't have I don't have anything like that set up, but I mean, it would be the last email address I would ever need. So <laughs> awesome. But I'm pretty sure, as far as domain costs are concerned, that one might be up there. I went there and it forwards to YouTube channel. <laughs> oh yeah, that old YouTube channel that I never wound up doing anything with. <laughs> I should probably un redirect that, but whatever. It's it's public now. 
<laughs> but yeah, never did never did anything with that channel. But I own it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up? Have you done anything this week? This week? Yeah, or lately? You working uh, on? Is well, okay. So the main thing that I can talk about working on, aside from random work around my house because i had to replace a bunch of siding on my house that's the boring stuff the <laughs> the interesting fun stuff that people are here uh, to you know what they want to know about is you know they want to see the hank venom merch oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know they, nice. they, they, they want to see the new ant venom merch it, well so okay just to get be a little bit more descriptive about it um you can kind of see it with this with this logo i'm redesigning everything that has oh. imagery. So like the logos, the banners, everything. So like if you see like the classic like blue back background Ant Venom Head A V logo that I've been using for years at this point, that will be changed within like two weeks. Um, I'm, you know, a whole new website, whole new design to everything. It feels weird to change it because also the intro, I've had the same intro on my YouTube videos for years. Anyone who knows me knows that intro. It's I as remember the intro. Time. That yeah. intro will be changing as well. And that's the only thing that feels weird to be changing. But the what it's being replaced with is so amazing. I don't even mind. So like Ooh. stuff like that. So intro, outro, um, wow. all that sort of stuff. So that's the main thing that will be going on with me. Um, you know, like main thing I'm working on right now. Not working on any music videos anymore, like Minecraft music videos like I used to do. Just because I was, they did well. And then the last one didn't do very well. Like I don't. It's really it. all it takes. Yeah, it's like the one just has to crash. Yeah. With yeah. the amount of money that goes into those projects, like I mean, you know, th these are five-digit yeah. projects. So. Yeah. Mm, I felt like, the same way about my kids. I kept having kids, and then I finally got to one, and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> you hit a magic number somewhere. Yeah, I'm like, that, that last one was just, oh. so we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell them didn't, that one. Didn't yeah. pay off the last one that, that I mentioned. thought it would, you know. <laughs> you weren't quite as good as I thought you were going to be, so I decided to have no yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if y'all merge the ideas, make the music videos about making the kids, and then, um, <laughs> oh no, you might get some views. With some of the Maybe meme not. content that's out there with Minecraft, I wouldn't be surprised. You just make a Minecraft meme video about the circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> that was really you know, on there was some uh, yeah hold up my youngest kid you know drop him off a cliff you know and i think early on we had some oh, submissions no. for minecraft porn i mean it wasn't really porn but it was like people in a room like hopping around mm. in minecraft look at that yeah hard up here too so I am thankful to say that that is a subset of the minecraft community that i have no idea about <laughs> like there used to be apparently there used to be like i don't know if it ever got lewd just because like i didn't look into it that deeply but me and Spar captain sparkles had a hashtag called spark ant that was around <laughs> for like a long time that was that basically just like anything involving shipping us like there, there yeah. is fan fiction and and drawings of that mm. and like i don't know maybe by me bringing this up i'm trying to revive that or maybe i'm not i don't know yeah like no, me and me and Good had some had some fanfic for a while there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Last time people the the community man managed to revive something of mine. So uh, a couple of old school Minecrafters, uh, Skitscape from way back in the day, used to call me Hank Venom, and I don't know why. It's just like they were the kind of guys with that kind of humor. They were just instead of saying Ant Venom, they come up with a weird word. They said Hank Venom. Then nobody called me that for like five years. And then SMP Live started up. So I, I was live streaming for a long time there last year. And they started calling me Hank Venom again. And now on Twitter, anyways, more people call me Hank Venom than they do Ant Venom. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just learned to accept it. So like, that's, that's why Hank Venom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious as to how well this will sell. It's just a literal Comic Sans shirt with it saying Hank Venom. Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that brings us to our uh, passcode of the week that you can get on the website. <laughs> Once this goes live, uh, the passcode this week is going to be, well, do you want to say it? Uh, I believe the passcode is going to be Hank. That is yep. correct. <laughs> so uh, remember that. 
and it will come in handy. And thanks for all the cheers and the subs. We got uh, Seal Sky uh, gave Spirit 707, gifted them a sub. Thank you. And we're going to move on into this, something that goes a little like... From the Minecraft Daily, news and updates. <laughs> In the news. So what? the big one, the news was a little skim this week. It was a little, little light, a little weak. Uh, but I did actually get a, uh, a, a a news item from a third grade teacher and, and she saw this and instantly messaged me at like <laughs> four in the morning and went, have you seen this? And I'm like, <laughs> no, but it's four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, and um, oh, wait, I'm thinking about the wrong thing. That's a different story. Oh, oh. That's, that oh. one's down in sightings. I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> But, Do we then, want to move ahead and come back to this? You can. Sure, I got a wanna... button because the yeah, story mean, sounds good. I don't feel. Sightings. No. <laughs> so no. This, is, this is reality bending. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so intense. Okay, continue your story. Uh, I mean, it's the only sightings, isn't it? Oh, well, we got a quake one or a doom or some game and no no that's that that's what i've got in the freaking where this is all screwed up okay <laughs> yeah, exactly how it's supposed to be okay yes so so <laughs> what what god told me is that you can play doom inside of minecraft and what it is is someone built a windows 95 emulator inside of minecraft Oh my god, I love that. And then they like, took the Windows 95 emulator. It uses a mod called VM Computers. Mhm. Mm okay? Um and then they took the Windows 95 emulator and installed Doom on it. The original Doom. That is so amazing. It's a, so it's a virtual machine? I think yeah. so. Like just a very rudimentary as as much as Minecraft can process anyways. Uh virtual machine i actually like i read through that article just because i had to i went through the notes as well at the beginning of the show there's a quote and i'm just gonna call it out right now there's a quote within that article that is so wildly incorrect it's not about the the thing itself there's an opinion in there that says yeah you won't be running minecraft in minecraft anytime soon and i'm raising the red flag on this i'm like no if we're getting windows 95 vm i'm pretty sure that someone at you could if you got the right version of Java installed, you could run a version of Minecraft Classic, probably on like Windows 98, maybe even 95. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Java was super around during 95. I think so. Um, but yeah, like if we're close to Windows 98, maybe we can get Windows 2000, which I'm sure has Java support. We, even yeah. if it's Minecraft Classic, on my computer that runs at like 10,000 frames a second, we only need like one or two frames a second to get the clickbait title. Right? <laughs> yeah. We can, we can work on this. I like this. And then we go to EverQuest in Minecraft. I got <laughs> I think we can do that. I don't I don't you can you can uh you can run Windows ninety five in a browser. <laughs> there's there's a uh there's an emulator running on a server somewhere. Um That's there's true. a website for that. So I think basically, I've seen it. so so you could run Windows ninety five on a browser so you would really mm -hmm. only need a uh you wouldn't really need an emulator you would just need to, like a way to browse something right and then you could play doom or minecraft or whatever um, like you don't need a virtual machine because it's hosted i think i see what you're saying but i mean for this purpose of running minecraft within minecraft um well oh what about a java emulator for windows 95 there you go. There you go. That's that's on the right track. I mean, we're having to double down on the emulator here. It might right. see if you're doubling down on the emulator, you might only get like a frame per year. Oh yeah, it's good it doesn't matter if the emulator within Minecraft renders a frame of Minecraft, you still get the clickbait title. That's it. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that, that's there you go. I like that idea. So I, I'm hearing like a main machine within Minecraft, or or how about if we can do the browser window, we can just play do Stadia within Minecraft and just <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And, and and then like five years from now, it'll be Minecraft within Minecraft within Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll just see like that'll oh, be pocket edition. Out. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's it'll be like all like the like different editions that you, you go down, you're playing the the phone edition in the the yep. Xbox edition that's inside the PC edition. Yep. And then you're going to uh, get that same creepy ass feeling when you're playing the Sims and you realize you're telling your Sim to play a game in the Sims. <laughs> and then you wonder what life is all about and you cry. <laughs> but was that game Minecraft? <laughs> exactly. Oh God, that, that's what they're applying all along in the Sims. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so there is some other like actual newsy stuff that uh, nobody emailed me at four in the morning about. <laughs> um, and what this is... On the Minecraft <laughs> Daily. News and updates. <laughs> yes. We have order right. to this show, Wes. There's <laughs> order. <laughs> There's order and structure. <laughs> but I found this to be really interesting. Okay. So, they have... Um, Oculus is now... Ex Oculus, you know, the, the, the VR headset people are now accepting open XR developed titles on the Oculus Rift and Oculus Quest stores, which superficially people might be like, well, okay, that's kind of cool. They're allowing people to use these things. But the trick here is that Minecraft's render dragon engine, which is the one they use for VR uses open XR, which means we might have, Minecraft VR on the Oculus Quest sometime soon. You can guarantee it. And that's pretty exciting. Like, I don't have insider news. I just know that Minecraft likes to be on every platform it can physically be on. There's no way they wouldn't do it on that. That's such an opportunity. Yeah. You know? True. And, and uh, I, you know, I've talked with a lot of people about VR stuff. Um, I'm even in some negotiations with some people in China about some VR stuff and the quest is the most exciting product out there right now. The, mm -hmm. it's not that it's the most powerful, but yeah. it's, but the fact that you don't need anything, you mm -hmm. can you, like, you just need it and no yeah. cameras or anything makes it a superior product. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be exciting to see what they do with it. I mean, think about this, for example, right? You could like. I mean, I don't know if it would be on a warehouse scale necessarily, but could you imagine like you just show up at an empty warehouse that maybe just has like rudimentary obstacles and, you know, if you look at it without an, uh, a VR rig, it looks dumb. But when you put on a VR rig, it sort of like skins the whole area that you're in to look like something else. Yeah. And if there's obstacles you can climb, they're physically there, but you're in VR space. So it would be like, what? I don't know. There, there's so many possibilities for stuff like that. Yeah. Like, could you you could literally be playing an FPS in real life in VR, you know, but and like you'd be in a warehouse where you could freely move around in VR to do that, you know, but I mean, sure, you could you could make the argument like, oh, just go play paintball then or something. But there's way more you can do in a virtual reality space. Oh, way, no, yeah. we're going to we're yeah. going to see a lot of amazing things happening with virtual reality over mm -hmm. the next like two years. Yeah. Like. Ryan Niantic Labs, uh, who does Pokemon Go and, and mm. the better game, you know, Ingress, um, and <laughs> Harry Potter, <laughs> Wizards Unite, they're actually working on another game that's that's kind of like that, where it's the AR, VR, yeah. uh, shoot them. And with Ingress, they've added this thing where they uh, encourage players to scan portals. So they're taking video 360 all the way around these, these things. And so they're getting all this data, because uh, yep. that's what they're selling with their games is location data and now they're getting this uh spatial data which is going to be used in these other games so i can definitely see uh them being at the forefront of some of this yeah mm -hmm. i think what i i think what i envision when it comes to where vr will go next like i think we're almost there it, it, like microsoft tried to do it with the hololens and they were almost there but if you could make it so that within a VR set like the Oculus Quest, you could have a real-time camera preview. So you could actually see what's in front of you enough for your brain to not get disoriented. Yeah. And then you could, and then th via AR, you could project onto that landscape and see it in VR. Then like you're three, you were three, we're inception three levels deep on this. Yeah. Like that, that'll be the future of VR is when 
I could walk around my house with it and things could get projected onto it. Or you could have these set games made to be projected into em- big empty spaces you could go into. Like the possibilities yeah. are endless. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. even like once they, def- they, they, they get this stuff working well enough to where I can take my phone and it can be like an IR lens. I mean, an AR lens. Yep. Oh, where, yeah. you, where you can just drop it in. I mean, some people have even wondered. It's like, what's the use of having like a 1440p or a 4K phone? And for the most part, they're right. I think, you know, like 99% of people won't use it that way. But you get a VR headset and you put it here. Suddenly that 4K resolution at 120 hertz is going to make a lot of sense. And there's going to be a massive market for that. Right. Yeah. Or imagine, imagine something like a Bluetooth toy gun. Okay, Mm -hmm. and then you are looking around with your phone and shooting at things Mm -hmm. like this is your lens into the VR world, Mm -hmm. but you have a Bluetooth tool that you use to interact with that VR world. Yeah, like we're on the we're on the cusp of so much cool stuff. You know, Apple is making the Apple glass glasses right now, and I could see them building something like that. Possibly contact lenses. No, these are actual like glasses you can. Because mm-hmm. I mean, both Run Google you. and Apple are both making the the contact lenses. If if you can make right. a pair of glasses where like it doesn't look obvious as to what it is, like it doesn't have giant cameras on it or something, you know, <laughs> right. like, like, that's the big not, thing. Because like yeah. Google Glass was actually was a great experiment, right? I mm-hmm. you know, but it was it was never going to catch on from day one. It's like yeah, it looks like you know you're the bad guy from a from a sci fi movie, right? You know, yeah. you're watching everyone. I don't understand why that's a bad thing. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. for those Aztec who had some that were cool. bad thing, not for the person doing the watching, I guess the evil villain. <laughs> so and, yeah. and so Apple's making those with the glasses. Yeah, and they're not putting a camera on it, um, and they're really thin. They, they they just look like normal glasses. Do um, they just like, project onto the glass or something to give you information? But it's really like subtle. So it's yeah, like, I gotta, I a HUD. Uh, yeah, I believe so. There, there's a lot of articles about it, um, but. Uh, I mean, they're essentially taking what other people fail to do and wrapping it up. Just like <laughs> the phone and everything else Apple makes. They're just like, I'm going to wait about 10 years and look at all the yep. failures, yep. compile a list, and then make something everybody wants. So, <laughs> you know. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like no. all tech ever. But um, to relate that to Minecraft, do you think they could have Minecraft on an Apple platform? Uh, I don't see any reason why not. Um you know, I, the thing is, like, I think Microsoft has done a good job in sort of muddying the, or not muddying, what's the right word? Um, allowing for cross-platform anything. So, like, if there's any yeah. single game that could go onto, like, an Apple platform like that, even though Microsoft makes it, it would be, you know, it would be anything Microsoft does, and specifically Minecraft, right? There, there's such yeah. a market there. I mean, it still is the mo- the highest-selling game of all time, and it still is top five most played games online, you know, in terms of like monthly players. I mean, I think Mm -hmm. Minecraft, you know, saw a massive surge in the past couple of months, people playing the game, you know, it's in the hundreds of millions of unique players a month, you know, and the game's only sold like 200 million copies. So like, it's insane. Like a lot of people who bought the games are still playing it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it says here that Minecraft is not the most selling game of all time. Let me guess. League of Legends. No, 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 it would be either Fortnite or PUBG. No, no, I don't think Tetris Tetris. took it back. Tetris, Tetris reportedly Uh, has 500 million sales. Now, here's the key. What is that? Hang on. This is the key. This is the key. key. Okay. Is that is that you're looking at multiple versions of the game? Most likely. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Throughout okay. History, right, right. So you've got things like Tetris 99, which is yeah. Tetris. Yeah. You know? That is. So so like Minecraft supposedly has 200 million plus and yep. Tetris supposedly has 500 million plus. I wouldn't doubt that honestly. And you could even make an argument that Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Java Edition are two entirely different things and they should be categorized differently because, yeah. you know, they both play way differently and have different functionality. To a yeah. to a degree, um, but yeah, I mean, okay. So for a second to Tetris, I I'll definitely buy that. Like t- that makes sense with Tetris. And then one other piece of interesting information is that while Minecraft, like on single title sales, is number one at over two hundred million. Okay, mm-hmm. 
Grand Theft Auto only has 130,000, 130 million sales, but mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto 5 is the single most profitable piece yeah. of entertainment yeah. ever created. I not not game, but piece of any the the single thing that has made the most money of any piece of entertainment in the history of the world. Yeah, like I, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're pulling a valve and they're just not really developing Grand Theft Auto Six if Grand Theft Auto Five is still selling that well. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised at all. Mm. Yeah. So Spe mobile oh, sorry, game though, most selling. What do you think? Mobile game most sold. Ooh, 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 ooh. I ooh. mean that well, that, I would that say EA most, Tetris, that EA Mobile Tetris, uh, most, <laughs> most played mobile game. So it's it's not oh. really sales. Um, my guess on that would probably be Angry Birds. And, um, uh, Happy Bird. <laughs> let's see. Angry Birds, 300 million. Pokemon Go is 1 billion. Okay. Oh, I this, should have, I should have yeah. said Pokemon Go, actually. Well, and this game actually almost oh. tripled Pokemon Go with 2.7 billion. Yep. Subway um, Surfers. Yep. What? Uh, yep. What the uh, crap is that? Never heard of it. <laughs> wow. So we'll try I've that never later. Heard of this. Huh. Uh, that's awesome. Jeez. Someone in chat said Candy Crush. It's like, oh, I could have bought that actually. That would have made some sense. Yeah. But. Candy Crush yeah. is number four. <laughs> so I've named named two of the top four. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Mm. <sighs> okay, there's one more piece of news, and this yes. is something that uh, that uh, Anvina might want to talk about. I will in a sec, but because we're on the topic, I don't have much to say about it, but I will brag about the fact that I met the guy who invented Tetris once. Oh, All right. nice. Oh. Shook, his, shook his hand at a, at a con. I felt I felt very proud of that. No, no picture or autograph, but it felt pretty good to be in the presence of... A, one of the godfathers of gaming like the real guy who made it or Ale like the Alexi guy who stole Ale it alexi palianov the guy who made it okay did you uh, ask him about subway surfers <laughs> 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 i still haven't still don't know what that game is i, no <laughs> I don't <idea>. either <laughs> all right okay. so the next topic no. so all right um so do you want i mean do you want me to go into detail about it and yeah because you're part. excited about this and your oh, yeah. excitement is our quality content. All right. So like one of the big things, obviously, that I do is, I mean, I, I like to break games. I like to see games or I, I like to break Minecraft. I like to see Minecraft uh, played in interesting ways and whatnot. And one of the newest Minecraft updates implemented something that I think is going to be very interesting as time goes on. So obviously mods have been able to do this forever. You know, the, this is the way mods work. But uh recently the so within minecraft your worlds can have a thing called a data pack and with that data pack there's a lot of different modifications you can you can basically modify anything that exists within the world and recently data packs like you can just import a data pack into a world and recently data packs got the capability to customize the terrain that that world will generate um and at fir at first for like the first few weeks it's still in snapshot form um or you know uh preview form um and for, for a little bit, it, you know, you could like customize which biomes would show up and whatnot. There are some neat things you could do. Now you can customize every facet of world generation. And one thing I wanted to get made, and I knew it would happen fast, and it did, is the ability to generate new worlds in the most modern version of Minecraft, but where the biome structure in, and biome shape and terrain is like it used to be in the beta days of Minecraft. So if you've ever heard of the Glacier World Seed, the Gargamel World Seed, all of that stuff, oh, you yeah. can generate worlds that look exactly like that in the latest version of Minecraft with current biomes and current structures. So if you like the way that those old school worlds looked, and even if you have an old map that you want to work with the new version, once one once this either if it's either going to be 1.16.3 or if it's going to be 1.17 once this comes out if you get the data pack that you know generates the terrain same as yours your old map will generate the proper ter you know the uh, proper terrain forever and it'll always have the new features so awesome. I'm, I'm really like i'm excited that that's going to exist it's going to allow for like the sort of stuff we used to see in mods with custom world generation like i would say it would be theoretically possible with all of the effects and whatnot that exist now 
I don't know if you can do it on with mobs, but you could make the aether in vanilla Minecraft. I would bet you could get very close. Nice. There's, levi there's levitation effects that would allow for a lot of those things to work. Custom loot that you could potentially make work. I don't know to what degree you can make custom mobs and custom items, um, but we're like right on that cusp. We could visually recreate the Aether. I think probably exactly because the Aether, if I recall correctly, uses old Minecraft code to generate its terrain. Specifically, the, the earliest versions of the Aether used an unused biome that Notch set up and never released called the Sky Dimension. There, it used to be in the old school days of Minecraft, so now I'm going real deep here, like tangent here. Mm -hmm. um, w Notch was going to make it so that when you would sleep in a bed, there was a chance you would wake up in a dream state, and he was setting up uh, a world, uh, uh, you know, a type of terrain for that, which is the Sky Dimension, which ultimately became the End Realm. But he was going to have an entirely different plan for that. But the Aether used that code for its world generation. So you could theoretically just make a data pack that generates the exact same train that the Aether used to. Nice. Yeah. So the, it's another one of those things where it's like when, when Mojang implements something that is just sort of a, a blank slate and they let the community go wild with it. Those are always Minecraft's best updates. Yeah. So. Skylanders yep. in Minecraft, it's on its way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, so I'm you could play you could play a, a, the modern day game, but with an old seed, an old mm -hmm. generation. Yep. So you could play the 404 challenge again. Yes. Remember that? <laughs> 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 that one I'm not so sure of, just because I don't know if with the biome changes, it'll still generate gravel in that spot. Right. But, it, um, but as far as like again, yeah. if you wanted to regenerate glacier with modern features. Um, or any other seed, or even if it's like, for example, my old map called, that I call the peaceful map um, was generated within those versions. I'm going to apply this data pack to that and maybe post the first peaceful map update that in seven years. Like it hasn't been updated since 2013, but I'm like, here's a usable version in modern versions that I've cleaned up and verif verified works. And you could now generate, you know, travel out and generate new terrain. I'll probably erase the nether in that map because it was garbage and there was nothing in it anyways. Let's rock on with a new nether in my, in my peaceful map. Like that, uh, that's right. what I want. So I'm excited about that. Like I might be willing to play my peaceful map again for the first time in seven years. <laughs> you so. heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all in the snapshot 20 W 30 a. Yep. Yeah. 29. Well, it's been, I think it started with like 26 a and they've been adding more and more to it. And now to the point okay. where in 30 a, yeah, you can generate the biomes to be basically exact. So oh. it's like, it's so, I mean, I, I'm going to mess around with it for a video. I'm, I think it's going to be the next video I'll make, um, because I'm so excited about this. Um, you know, like it, it was like as soon as I heard that custom biomes were a thing, I was like, guys, this is overlooked. Why aren't you all screaming and shouting and joy about this? <laughs> and then and I, I, was, I was talking about it in my Discord, actually, and they all slowly started to realize, like, oh, God, we could potentially do this. Nobody had created the data pack for it yet. And now and this came out you know, weeks later. So, of course, you know. Like if this is happening in the first two weeks of the snapshot being out, wait until three months from now. Like people are going to be yeah. create like because the world height is, is 256 high. There's going to be people creating entirely different ideas for what they think Minecraft terrain generation should be. And they can mm -hmm. release it as a data pack. And when creating your world, you just hit a button and import it and you're there. That's what mods are probably going to look like in three years in Java edition is you just hit a button and you import it and your world just has them all in the world save file and it'll all work within vanilla Minecraft. I hope so. Cause that would be a fantastic way for Mojang to go, you know, to nice. make the mods like different on a world by world basis. And you just fire up the, you fire up Minecraft vanilla and you just, you know, import whatever, import whatever mod you want into your specific world. That would be a, such a good way for them to go. And it seems like they're going in that direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for all those yeah. people saying that Java edition is uh, on its way out, uh, think again. Yeah. <laughs> They'll just emulate it in the windows 10 version. So you can just <laughs> load it up in there. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's one thing you can do is, you know, you can get on to windows 95 and play um, old Minecraft seeds. I actually feel like addressing a question in chat because it's very relevant. And I know the answer to this because I did it. Someone asked, if, is it going to be possible to create a higher nether with this? Because the nether in Minecraft right now only goes up to 128 blocks. Mm -hmm. And the answer to that is yes, because um, I've done it. Uh, I didn't do it very well, but I was basically just looking through, you know, uh, the, I think Mojang, they published like 
if you wanted to import a, uh, how do I word this? A data pack that does all the default options. So it basically is what my vanilla Minecraft does. I was looking through that and I'm like, where's the lettering for nether height? And I found it and I changed it and it generated a nether that was 256 high, but above the midway point, there was no other biomes. So that stuff was broken. Oh, weird. But if someone knows what they're doing, they could make it work. They could make the modern nether generate that high. And it was funny. I even released a video a while back saying that I think it would be a good idea if they generate the nether 256 high. I got a lot of flack for that from the technical community who likes to mess around on the nether roof. This feels like the in-between solution where it's like anyone who wants a nether, high, a nether roof that's very high, hit a button, import the data pack. You're ready. You can import multiple data packs, whatever you want. And it mm -hmm. all works like the last couple of weeks for Minecraft updates has been really exciting, even if people don't realize it yet. Nice. Yeah, mm. I'm excited for whenever whenever this drops into the main version of Minecraft, people are going to go nuts. Cool. <laughs> I think it's, hey, Brent, Brent. Hey, uh, yeah, I kind of spilled a drink on my computer. Not on oh, my, like yeah. a laptop, but yeah. on my computer. Oh, um, I, mean, I no, just thought really? you were really excited about the things that are around you. I didn't know if like your dog was jumping on you or what. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Um, I think it's okay. It's it's my old one. That's good, at least. So it's only half a stream. Your old die. drink? No, my old <laughs> computer. But um, <laughs> So... Where were we? <laughs> Don't we have a bumper? We have a bumper, we do have right? A bumper. Here we go. I just snorted. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, the shaft? You really gonna go through with this? I'm gonna mine, and I'm gonna grieve every last one of them. Listener contribution done. Yeah. I cut it off way nice. too early every week. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't there's know. a surprise ending. Why? Because there's a surprise ending. And now I know. And so uh, we played it. And we have a bunch of um, call-ins. Well, they're not really call-ins. They're where we took your comments and um, creeped them out. I don't know really what to call it, but... <laughs> You're probably never going to leave comments again, or maybe you'll leave more. So let's go through a couple of them. <laughs> let's see. We have this one. Mike Gallagher says, glad to see old episodes being re-uploaded. <laughs> that was on a video. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought there was more. <laughs> like, and? It's kind of short, right? The uh, selection is weird, yeah. Well, this one's better. This one's from, uh, well, okay. it'll say the name. Here it goes. 10 Ton Hammer 69 says, I started listening to this podcast in May of this year, and I just finished listening to all 231 episodes today. My <laughs> life feels empty without the shaft all day. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. there's like... Two more episodes you got to get to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's behind. Why'd you slow down? <laughs> That's awesome. So, and um, we are re-releasing, uh, since we lost our, or we left our old channel and we started the new one, we're re-releasing all the episodes there. So you'll be able to get all the back episodes, uh, the videos there uh, soon enough. The audio, you know, you can still get off the feed, but mm -hmm. we're still working on that one be able to yeah. see the pr progression of how I've presented myself in front of a camera over the years. Like when yeah. I did that for my first episode on the shaft podcast, like I was not using face cams at all. I was not really ready for it. I think I had like a nylon uh, pop filter and it was basically up here. Like, uh, I yeah, my the face the whole time. and then it was funny. I watched an episode. Um, it was one of the episodes right before my second one. Um, I know his name was Zach. And uh, Galifianakis, oh, I think. Yeah. No, no, no. It was. Um. Oh crap! 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 Right. Oh, good. Oh Martin. shit! Martin? Yes. Yes. Spartan. Yes. Killer. Spartan. Killer. Killer. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, and I don't know why, but I was like, I'm a. I like that camera angle. I'm gonna do that one. And I, so I basically, so like, if you were to actually watch the Spartan Killer episode and then that that one, which was pretty quickly after, that was why, because I got a little self conscious, and now it's just like. 
this is where my camera always is. I don't know. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> hey, Pop still wanted to in back then. We we had him in front of our faces too. <laughs> yeah, the big disc. For just those a, yeah. listening that that want to track these down, Ant Venom was on episode seventy one, uh, as well as episode one thirty six. Yeah, there you go. Find yep. those. <laughs> so we're it's doing like every bad. seventy or so. So mm-hmm. episode three hundred, maybe that'll be a good. Bam. <laughs> uh, let's see. We also got uh, Derpy Pizza Roll. Derpy Pizza Roll says, Hi, usually I just watch your Twitch streams, but I decided to come here and let you know how much I enjoy your podcast. Keep up the great work. Oh, you. you said great. I like your voice. It's very sweet. <laughs> I mean, the good thing with this is I can edit their comments and make them say whatever I want. I mean, don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> All these commenters seem to have the same voice. You sure it's not the same guy? <laughs> um, well, let's see. Here's here's a different voice. I think I remember being 14 back in 2011, listening to you guys. You were one of the few Minecraft podcasts I'd enjoy back then. I'm glad you're all still around. <laughs> I am too. I didn't want any of us to die. <laughs> <laughs> that get creepy real fast. <laughs> so yeah you call in leave us your own comments um i mean those were comments but you can call our speakpipe.com slash the shaft and and leave your own voice unless you just want us to put the treatment on it whatever that is (laughs) the treatment the treatment yeah Yeah, i was trying to get as creepy as you were going did it work Mm. did Mm. i get there no yes Mm. are you just enough value there what's going on now what what is this uh is this an excavation station idea in our listener contribution excavation station oh that is so nostalgic hearing that exact intro right (laughs) (laughs) it took that specific one to get me really nostalgic but (laughs) by the way we have a sponsor Hey, you can go to audibletrial.com slash the shaft and get two free audiobooks. And one of them that you could choose is a short account of the history of mathematics. And the book is by W. Roos Ball, but it's but it's narrated by Tony Shaloub of Monk or Marvelous Miss Maisel fame. Okay. And uh, some of the um, some of the comments on this particular audiobook were fantastic. This would be a great sleep aid, aid but for the perfection of Tony Shalhoub's voice. Because mm-hmm. as soon as I heard his voice, I immediately started reliving Marvelous Miss Maisel and worrying about how Midge is going to resolve the whole Shy Baldwin mess. And then I remembered all her amazing dresses and so on. So now I'm awake again. <laughs> nice. You could have had the robot read that comment, by the way. Yeah. Spot <laughs> <laughs> done with an automated voice. You just kind of chill here and listen in. And then, <laughs> and then, as a contrary review, it said, "I thought I knew a thing or two about math. I thought I'd be interested and engaged. However, he lost me at Pythagoras, and I slipped into a blissful slumber. Night, night. Oh, wow. He couldn't take it. He yeah. couldn't take the math. Crazy." <laughs> We're gonna get. We're gonna have to get you to do a, an audio book commentary, uh, Wes. I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> you, you know the uh, like Captain guy on Monk. He was the the killer in um, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Hmm. Really? Was he really? Yeah. Hmm. Put the oh, oh, in the basket. Buffalo Bill. He was Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Oh. Wait, is that the one who like uh, you know put the put the lotion in the basket? Yeah. That is exactly who it is. Isn't that crazy? Um, So we did get some poop block excavation station ideas. Uh, This one is from Silsky. Silsky. Well, we'll see what the robot says. Silsky says, Wes, I know you hate the idea of natural disasters, but hear me out. I would like to have a volcano island, like a mushroom island. It would have at least one large mountain that is an active volcano. The volcano erupts rarely, every 20 to 30 in game days. It spews lava shoots fire charges, and litters the ground with obsidian and stone. It could also spawn blazes, magma cubes, and maybe a new boss. Hmm, interesting. I mean, a natural disaster inside of a finite zone of control is one thing. Yeah. (laughs) 
I just don't want tornadoes driving through yeah. my 18 hour build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess it's like isolated to its own like biome, maybe within the ocean or something that wouldn't necessarily connect near your natural terrain or something or something like that. It might be kind of cool. I know that yeah. Mojang has also like been doing game rules a lot for various things. Like you can, there's a game rule where you can disable phantom spawning. So maybe you could have the biome still spawn, but have the mob spawning as a result of it. You know, you could mm. disable that. So I mean, Minecraft has granularity in that regard. So that could be neat. Yeah, yeah. You like might that. even be able to do something like that with the data packs now. Honestly, I bet you could do everything that was just described within a data pack. Wow! Except for, the, except for the new boss, that would have to be its own implementation. But how, how about this? How about this? What if there were lava temples? Okay, mm -hmm. and so you have a volcano with a temple in the side of it, right? Mm -hmm. And but periodically the lava goes down, mm -hmm. and then you can go in, and you have finite amount of time to loot the temple before <laughs> the lava starts filling it back up again. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. There you go. That's my <laughs> that's my modification on your volcano idea. Mm -hmm. Fixed it. <laughs> Now, one thing that I was really wanting with the latest Minecraft update, speaking of sort of things like that, so when 1.16 was being developed and they were doing the new nether biomes, they had the biomes in place while they were developing them, and then they implemented this new super rare, better than diamond material called Ancient Debris, but the only place you could find it at that point during the snapshot was super deep underground. So I'm like, why do you make all these biomes for us to explore? And then the one thing you'd want to go to the to the nether for, you have to dig underground for. Like, what's really the point with that? There should be some kind of like an interesting structure that sh they should implement or some sort of a new thing to explore around for uh, that involves you having to explore the new biomes, right? It makes it so that you, you are, with this update, encouraged to explore the new biomes. And it was like yeah. three snapshots later, they implemented the brand new like there, I, I don't know exactly what the temples are called, but there are new nether temples now that are like way more rare than the, 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 uh, what do you call it? Strongholds. The strongholds. Yeah. Yeah. They're way more rare than that. They have ancient debris in them. And then they also have like the new record discs and so you can find all kinds of piglins if you want to make, you know, devices of them. So I was worried that 1.16 getting back to this, I was worried that 1.16 wasn't going to be fun. And then it was, you know, so I, I, I don't know if I had anything to do with that decision, but it felt pretty good to, for them to implement exactly what I was hoping they would implement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1.16, pretty fun. And we, but we, yeah. we also have some comments on your comments, Wes, already. So, oh God, here they go. <laughs> Rock on 101000 says, We are wearing Wes down. Soon he'll be pro tornado and destructive boss mob. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good and we also have um this one a rix one redeemed 250 poop blocks to submit a excavation station idea which is read my name i followed <laughs> i followed <laughs> so, okay read my name read my name <laughs> a rix one i don't know if that's how you say it but we also have one here um I don't know where it went. Here it is. No C has an excavation station idea, which is the voice of God, client side or single player exclusive. A person you get to choose from a list of voice actors narrates your every move. Bonus points for Stephen <laughs> Fry or Morgan Freeman. <laughs> uh, I might have to go with James Earl Jones. Honestly, Morgan yeah. Freeman is probably first, but James Earl Jones could could take him. See, I, you know, the Gilbert. <laughs> Are you pulling out Gilbert? Yeah, I was going to go with Gilbert Gottfried. I'm like, <laughs> you know. And then Wes went into the cave. <laughs> what was that game that uh, gets narrated? Uh, it's uh, Stanley Parable. I just yeah. 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 That guy. Yeah, that's what I always think about. And there was another one, too, where you're on this, like, floating platform. And it was, like, a 2D or 3D top-down uh, indie game that was all narrated. It was really cool i don't know if you know it but <laughs> i'm unsure um yeah i love like narrative games like that that would be really cool can that be a mod 
I guess that could be a mod. For narrating, mod. Well, for narrating everything you're doing, I mean, I could see like a custom map being made like that, but as far as everything in Minecraft, I mean, if you want to narrate everything you're doing, you can use the old school April Fool's resource pack that happened, I think it was in like 2014, where it's just, there is an old series on YouTube called An Egg's Guide to Minecraft, and that's where the old school like villager voices first became a thing. And Mojang for a day made it so that, that those were the natural sounds. So, so you have to like watch that series to know, but every time you would like dig up a block or something, instead of playing the sound for that item, I would just say, dig, dig, dig. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was for a stone, it would say mine, mine. And for walking, or it would say like grass, grass, grass. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was a great one. Yeah. So it, that might be, as, for Minecraft, that might be as close to narration as we can yeah. get for other games. Uh, <laughs> So, okay, by the way, uh, cool. JBJ Blaze guessed it. Uh, I was talking about Bastion. Remember Bastion? Oh, yeah. Bastion was good, really too. Great, like, narrator in that one. But, Never uh, played it. The Stanley game. Parable was narrated by Kevin Bright Brighting, who also did Dungeons 3. <laughs> Which oh, is huh. which Dungeons Dungeons is like the spiritual sequel to uh, Dungeon Keeper. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love Dungeon Keeper. Yeah. It was funny. You couldn't think of the name Bastion before, and the name of the structure I couldn't think of before were Bastions. Oh. I'm, actually, I'm dead serious. The net things in the Nether I was talking about before were called Bastions. So oh, that's, that's, that's funny. We were both forgetting about the exact same thing. Yeah. That word is just like devoid in the human brain <laughs> or something. Yeah. You know, I might have an idea for the excavation station. Oh, Whoa. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I uh, you know, I thought something up. There's a little idea that I have for Minecraft. Uh, so here, you want me to reveal it, or you want to yes. go through with the other viewer ones? Right? If there's no, any no, 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 we're, we're good. We're done. It's all you. All right, all right. I, all right. So here's my idea for uh, what to implement at the Minecraft. Well, I, me and my buddy have been wanting an update called Combat and Cobalt, just because we know that Mojang is redoing Combat again. So there's one of two ideas. One, we they should call it 1.92 Electric Boogaloo because <laughs> we're redoing Tonga and they could serve to redo the end again. That would be cool. But I want to see an item, whether you call it Bluestone or Cobalt or whatever, I think Cobalt would be a better name, um, where it functions like Redstone, but it's actual fun. It connects like minecart tracks too. So it only connects on two ends at a time. And it can also run parallel to Redstone. Aside from that, I would let the community just do whatever they would want to do with it. Like, so it's redstone that can only connect on two ends at a time. So it, yeah. there's interesting ways you could cross those around uh, and whatnot. Well, and it would also be useful in conjunction with redstone if it doesn't mm -hmm. interfere. Right. Like the, the fact that you could do circuits in smaller spaces would be amazing. Yeah. Yep. And the thing is, and I mentioned this before, but this is actually why I, I had this in mind, but the best Minecraft updates are those that are blank slates where Mojang implements an item that can be freely used to create more creative things. And the last, one of the better last examples of that, I think was the honey block. Um, they just implement something that it's in every way a slime block, except entities. It doesn't, it doesn't interfere with slime. So it doesn't stick the slime, the, and not in exactly the same way, but also entities stick to it rather than bouncing off of it. It's, su it's such a menial little thing, but it allowed for, you know, back in the old days of Minecraft, um, some of the big redstone devices to, you know, test someone's redstone ability was to create piston doors. You know, you'd see like the three by three piston doors and those were real fancy. Then there's five by fives. Oh, man. You can create infinite size piston doors now if you intermingle honey blocks and pistons and... Uh, slime blocks together in a really clever way. So just what you can do with it is really interesting. So any update where Mojang implements stuff like that, but specifically for the excavation station, my idea is cobalt or bluestone or whatever. Um, but so it functions kind of like redstone, but not quite. Last time we got that, we got a block that functioned kind of like a slime block, but not quite. And right. we got really good, a really good result out of it. So yep. what if I were like... Um like one is alternating current and one is like direct current. Hmm. Is that? Ooh. I'm not <laughs> sure in that regard because I know you can technically do an alternating current with redstone. It gets yeah. more complicated with uh, with complex devices. Hmm. 
I don't know. Mm. But, but, but you see, but the point is it starts a lot of discussion like that, right? right, yeah. right. So see, they could implement it and the community could collectively say one side of that doesn't really work until they get it to a point where everyone's like, oh, this is really interesting. And then, yeah. then the wider community who doesn't, you know, look at snapshots gets a hold of it. And then suddenly it's like, well, you know, they just reintroduced Redstone for a second time. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the way that I... And then we get to point our fingers at him and go, you're stupid! <laughs> oh my god. Speaking of stupid, I have an idea. Oh, okay. Uh, we like stupid ideas. I want I mean, farming boots. Okay, I want a pair of boots I can put on while I farm that doesn't kill my crops. I, I like <laughs> that idea. I approve. And I can't mm -hmm. sprint while I've got them on. Right? Because oh, okay. they're, they're really... Because, you know, you got to have a give and take. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Can't sprint while I got them on, but while I'm walking around doing my farming, I don't kill my crops. There's and, my idea. But then, but then a side bonus: if you're wearing those boots, when you actually uh, grab, uh, you know, your crops from the ground, there's a slight chance you get maybe one extra. So if it's oh. a potato instead of getting, you know, I don't know if you get just one potato from each plant. I think it might be multiple. But um, when you mine it up or when you take it out, you might get a few more. And yeah. it's almost oh. like a so having those boots is almost like a fortune enchantment for, for farm. Yeah. So, but, and, and, but they randomly explode. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's the take from, for the give. That's it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think the recipe would have to be uh, one cowhide like leather with eight dead cat fur around it and then you make <laughs> one shoe and then you make a second shoe and then you put those together to make a pair of shoes that you can actually wear yeah. a little advanced like a recipe corner. because they're technically lucky on one corner you have a rabbit's foot hey i like that nice. so yeah. so seven dead cat pelts and one <laughs> rabbit foot <laughs> That Sweet. that's what makes it lucky. And Zen Zen Stream says you should be able to wear hose as shoes. And <laughs> I'm like, look, I'm enough of a hoe as it is. I don't need shoes too. <laughs> Zen Stream says they should add a way to protect your crops from other players who try to steal them. Oh God, he's he's inside he's he's inside referencing us right now actually, and I don't <laughs> think you guys know said inside reference. Zen is a guy who plays up the idea where he thinks that, it, you know, like obviously on on like a survival multiplayer server or something, you would never want to like steal someone's blocks from their walls in their house, right? Yeah. yeah. I think he's just playing this up, but he feels the same way about crops, even if you replant them. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's just, he's just playing around. Oh. <laughs> he, he invaded the podcast of the memes. Uh. <laughs> that works, though. That's that's what you spend your poop blocks for. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, I have one. What is that? Uh, so this is, uh, how about a magnetic force? So you can uh, maybe have maybe a block that generates it. Maybe you have... Uh, a block that can um, can kind of like uh, suck in other matter or items or entities or something, and then if if you have a, a two by two, it's even stronger and a four by four. So you could build kind of like this Katamari Damacy ball that could just suck everything in. I know it might not be useful as a large uh, <laughs> object, but as a small one, you could use it as like a way to suck in. Um, entities or or just objects or whatever into hoppers and devices and good if it so could it'd be a useful part. yeah it'd be a useful tool but also it'd be like a, a good sweeper for like um uh like mob grinders and stuff like that right you wouldn't have to use like yeah. water to push it you just pull it yeah you know, okay it that seems real that actually seems like a really cool idea actually i was thinking if it could like take blocks that are placed around it, then I know that I know servers that would grief that hard. They use that to grief hard, but for yeah. just entities, yeah. not, maybe not including mobs. Cause that might be overpowered, but for the items, mm -hmm. you know, within a certain radius, that sounds really cool. Actually. Might be kind of neat. You put in a forest. It could just start sucking up like uh, sticks and saplings that yeah. fall randomly, you know, and put them in a chest or something. So, I don't know. I those technical mods need to get on that if they don't have that, because that sounds like a really cool, useful sort of many uses item. Yeah, hmm. that's that's it. That's my idea. 
<laughs> Thumbs up to that one. Woohoo! I like it. <laughs> hmm. Brent. Uh, Oh, I yeah. know you have um, an awesome idea. No, it, it's a crap one, but uh, <laughs> we, we've been talking for like two hours anyway, so we'll just get through it. Backpacks. But they, there's mods galore, but I, I just wanted in the game backpacks and not, not you know, chests that you have to put down to open. They, they're in your inventory and they open up on your screen. Yep. And you can do your stuff and close them and move on. You can walk while you're looking in your backpack. Whatever. Here's um, my uh, idea to sort of add on to that. You know, like on the left side of the screen, there's uh, whatever effects you have, and then there's the the recipe book. Well, to counter it on the right side, you could have your backpack. There you go. So when if you have a backpack oh, equipped in a backpack slot, then it shows a right side in uh, you know on the oh, side of where your main inventory is, and it is technically a side inventory. So right. all you can really do for backpacks right now is like a chest on a mule. That's the best you can really do. <laughs> it doesn't really, doesn't really yeah. fit the bill for what I know you're going for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty Inventory cool. I like space. that one. Yeah. But cool. Um, yeah. That's, that's pretty much everything because we did this out of order for some weird reason. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead it. and start oh some dementia outro music. Dementia. <laughs> Dyslexia. <laughs> Are we are we gonna do the robot voice for the outro? Well, sure. I mean, I thought you set that up earlier. I thought I heard it do it. The five thousand year old two acts as the virtual world center point. Archaeologists first conducted a detailed excavation of the structure in 1928, according oh. to the Welsh government's oh, website. Oh, I know what that it's is. Long yeah. <laughs> no, we want this one. Watch us live on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash the shaft live. Call us at speakpipe.com slash the shaft. Email us the shaft podcast at gmail.com. Give us iTunes reviews. Go to our website at the shaft.live. We have a Discord. Check the links below for an invite link. Leave comments on videos and we may create creepy voices to play them live on the show. <laughs> live! Peace out. <laughs> awesome. Why did, he sounded real depressed when he said, We have a Discord. <laughs> I also Super like how he depressed. said, Give us iTunes reviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. We laugh about it now, but when AI can k keep up to keep up with what we intend with sentences, then we're all in in trouble. What, yeah. Because then we can just invent sentences, and it sounds exactly like another person. We're almost there. Oh, the yeah. script. Pretty soon, the, the, the podcasters script, right? will all be robots. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we laugh about that, but like Linus Tech Tips, they made a video where they tried to totally replace one host with another and they used AI to come up with the audio. And like it, as far as like, you know, you think about what text to speech started as, it's very close. Yep. It's very, very close. And before we know it, they'll be able to know what we mean with an, you know, they'll be able to guess our inflection, you know, uh, in, in a sentence that we type. And then you'll be able to just, type in a sentence into a program, click a drop down as to what voice you want it to sound like, and it yeah. will be indistinguishable. Yeah, and like the, the Eric robot will just do bad puns. Yeah, <laughs> for like 10 hours straight. Yeah. Long, yeah. very long episodes. Yeah, yeah, it'll happen. Uh, <laughs> Thanks well, for joining us, Aunt Vim. Well, Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me just about everywhere at something slash ant venom. So youtube.com slash ant venom, twitter.com slash ant venom. I would say Instagram, but I don't use it. That's the ant venom on Instagram. I but you gotta get you got that haircut, man. You gotta you gotta change your gears here, man. You're yeah. getting all pretty for the people. You gotta you gotta show it off. Oh well, twitch.tv slash ant venom would be the other big place. So Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, mostly YouTube, but yeah. So YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. That's and, where you can find me, Ant Venom, uh, uh, on uh, all those platforms. And where can they get their uh, Hank shirts? The Hank Venom shirts? Yeah. When the, so not the website right now, but uh, it'll be on the new AntVenom.com when that goes live. And hopefully, like, maybe as little as a week, but I'd say as much as three, maybe. We'll see. So, but probably... So I, I'm going to say... 
99% chance it'll be before September. Awesome. You rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll one-up you. Creeper. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll like drop that down real quick. Uh, <laughs> and Venom, thank you so much for being on the show. We'll have you on again in another 80 something episode. <laughs> and by then, your hair and your webcam will be even better. The hair will be the same because my hairline doesn't change at all, but it'll just all be gray by that point, I'm sure. So, uh, like, no, but no, it'll be great because I've got good genetics with my hairline. So I'm kind of looking forward to it, actually. I feel you. I feel you. Right? Yeah, I'm you, not losing any hair. Okay. It's just you, all you're, gray you're, as hell. Exactly. You're getting the best part of the package, right? <laughs> like, hairline perfect. Like, and. <laughs> Long, silvery, flowing hair. Like, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should quit this. We've been going on for an hour and a half. Uh, two hours. Really? An hour and 54 minutes. We can break this up into two episodes now. Oh, no. no. But everybody, thank you so much. Thank you, Ant Venom. Thank you, everybody, for the cheers and the subs and the gifted subs and the comments and everything. Come back next week. We mm -hmm. have another guest lined up. Um, yes. We'll tell you. Oh, I, I, I have Palmar lined up, and now that I've said his name out loud, I can guilt him into making him <laughs> come. There you go. <laughs> so come back next week. We'll see you all then. Thank y'all so much. Good night. Congratulations, you made it through the shaft alive. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player and leave us feedback. Read show notes, leave us a voice message, and find out more about the show at www.theshaft.live. I hope you all enjoyed. My name is Hank Venom, and I bid you all farewell. Thanks so much for watching.